I remember as a kid at the 1994 bushfires in Como, watching the devastation with Dad while he worked. And every time I hear about bushfires, it brings up these old memories. I've seen firsthand how devastating they are, and many people are experiencing that devastation right now. This country's on fire. My thoughts and prayers go out to the families, to the RFS, to the Red Cross volunteers, to the wildlife rescue volunteers, and everyone affected, both physically and emotionally. Homes are lost, lives have been lost, and I thought to myself, what can I do as an arborist from Sydney? There are some things I can do. The main thing is to spread awareness, let you know about how we can donate and how we can help. But specifically as an arborist, I can increase the awareness around the 1050 bushfire regulation. This was brought out after the 2013 bushfires that destroyed over 248 homes. Multiple lives were lost. The government got together and essentially had a knee-jerk reaction to allow homeowners to clear trees away from their homes. It got rolled out and it got re restricted. With the 1050 regulation, homeowners in a designated 1050 bushfire entitlement zone were able to clear trees without approval up to 10 metres from their home and clear under scrub up to 50 metres from their home. A lot of people haven't taken advantage of this and no way am I blaming this on the current situation. I'm just raising awareness for the people that can create more of a buffer between their home and the trees. The leaves of a tree are the parts that carry the inferno through the treetops and often to people's homes, to their roofs, to their dirty gutters. So what we can do is get an arborist, whether it's me or someone else, come out and do a free bushfire inspection. This is something I recommend to do every 12 months. Any decent arborist will do it for free for you. They'll check if there's things that can be done to reduce the canopy of a tree towards your house. As an arborist, people often think that I must be a, a greenie or must love trees. And then the other side, people think that I must hate trees. The reality of the situation is some days it's one way, some days it's the other. Some days I love them, but some days I hate them. I hate them when they come crashing through people's homes, yet I love looking at them. I love walking the dog, I love seeing trees. I love climbing through them. I hate them when they burn, and they burn into people's homes. The reality of the current fire situation is that trees are they're the medium where the, the fire just rushes through the canopy of trees until it reaches people's homes, people's communities. I love how trees produce oxygen and cleanse the air the vast majority of the time. But I hate at the moment how these trees are burning and producing carbon dioxide and infecting our atmosphere. I love trees' ability to adapt. In Australia, to some extent, we need bushfires. We need these trees to burn. We need these trees for, for seeds to germinate. But for so many reasons, we don't need these bushfires to go through. So I'm feeling a real, real duality. I'm feeling really torn at the moment. I'm devastated to see that much loss of trees, but through the loss and the hardship these trees are feeling, I can see the duality that these trees are going to regrow, just like the communities, just like all the people involved. They've taken an absolute battering, but they'll come back stronger, much stronger. And I hope and I wish, just like any community that's experienced a bushfire, they come back with a vengeance. These communities come back so strong and connected because the people in these communities are forced through human instinct to rely on each other. They're forced to ask for help. They're forced to be vulnerable, show their complete emotion and vulnerability. That's what forms human connection. Yeah, I'm a bit emotional about what's going on at the moment, and there's a lot of things that can be done to prevent this, but we are where we are, and we've got to look at the silver linings, and there's going to be plenty out of this. There's going to be a lot of learnings, and hopefully not as many communities in the future will have to experience this heartache as a result of the learnings that are going to come out of these current fires. I wish anyone affected your families, your friends, even the koalas and the kookaburras. My thoughts and prayers are with you. And if you have anything spare, follow the links and donate wherever you can. Even if it's only donating food or supplies, everyone can do a little bit more than they currently have.